Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me today. We're gonna to go through how to take and edit a black background non-studio photograph of an animal. In today's video, we're gonna look at a horse in the situation and because of lockdown, we're gonna improvise and it's gonna be epic. So if you've always wondered this or if you just don't really know how to do it, then stick around for the start of this video. If you wanna jump ahead to the, just the editing portion, skip ahead through to the time on the screen right now, which you can also get to via the scrubber at the bottom. If you haven't already, please do remember to press the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. I am Jess and I'm here to enrich your life with all sorts of photographic and life skills and stuff. So let's go see how you would shoot this particular shot. So with the absence of a real pony and a real shed, we've improvised. Pony is here on our makeshift yard surface and we're gonna basically pop a shed on. Now there is a very important point to note about sheds. Big ones usually look better because they've got a much larger front. The important thing to know about the shed and the position of the horse in it is that you don't want the horse completely in the shed or completely out of the shed. You kind of want the horse to be in the doorway at the point of the shadow. First, let's work out what light we need. So most people might go and attempt to do this in a full sunny day, a big sun shine all over the place. That is so bright. So in full sun, you end up with very harsh shadows on the bottom. And actually, if your horse is stood in the doorway, you'll end up with straight lines of shadow across the horse, which isn't really ideal. So the best kind of situation that you can do this in is light but soft sunlight. So sun that's diffused by clouds, like this. So with soft light added, the harsh shadows completely diffuse and now it's time to shoot. So with your lens and camera prepared, you need to expose for the side of the horse that's outside of the shed. And if you do that correctly, everything inside will be black. If we expose for the horse on the outside, we end up with really good exposure in terms of what's in the barn. Now, if the horse was further out of the barn, you lose the level of softness that comes on the back end of the horse. If the horse is too far in the barn, you end up in a situation where you're fighting the exposure of the barn and the horse. So in these situations, if the horse is too far in the barn, you then need to change your settings to allow more light in. But if you change your settings to allow more light in, you then start to introduce a lot of background of the barn in shot. So it's important to stay just on the outside. What do you do if you've end up with a shed that's got way too much light in? Well guys, what you can do, let's pop the horse back to the front, is use a slightly smaller shed. So you still need to have a decent opening, but a smaller shed will create a much higher control of light and shadow, and therefore the difference will be really, really obvious. So if we were to look at the histogram on this image that we've got at the moment, do you see that there's a very large spike in black? The very large spike in black is the background. So there is no detail or data there at all. With these principles in mind, let's go ahead and look at the edit and how you would edit an image shot in this style. Because obviously lockdown, we can't go out and shoot this for you guys, but we've been very kindly given some raw files to work with from Joe. So Joe at Wild Air Portraits, absolutely amazing. It was my wedding photographer as well, though she is an animal portrait photographer, so go and check her out. She's linked in the description below. Joe has spoken to this wonderful owner here of this beautiful horse and just double check that we're allowed to use this and we are allowed. So again, thank you massively. So Joe set this up as per the section on how to set up a uh, shot like this. Jo knows what she's doing, I haven't told her how to do it. We just, this is how you do it. So um, first things first, we're in Lightroom, we're just gonna white balance. So because this horse has got white on it, it's quite straightforward to white balance the image. I've just pulled down the highlights a little bit because some of them were a little bit hot, but I'm not gonna touch these shadows. Let's turn on the black clipping and see how far away we are from having the blacks clipped. We're pretty close, I would say. I'm gonna leave it not doing that in this particular program. We're gonna go over to Photoshop and work through the rest. So let's right click, edit in, Photoshop, and was over there. 
first things first guys, duplicating that background layer. So we've got our background layer there for safekeeping, but um, a new layer there too. Now, first things first for me personally, looking at an image like this is my cleanup. So I'm gonna start with cleanup. Um, there's a super useful video which goes through um, ways to remove things in pictures. I'm gonna link that above, but uh, I'm just gonna go through and do my removals. All of the methods in that particular video would be relevant for this. You could, if you wanted to, just go ahead and paint black everywhere, but I like to do things like this first and then work through my blackness afterwards. Okay, so when it comes to removing collars, leads, things like that, you can go ahead and use just the spot removal tool or you can use one of the other tools. I like the healing brush tool personally because I think it does a nice job of correcting and healing through different areas. And you just wanna take multiple different sources to make sure that you get a nice clean finish. I'm not gonna spend too long doing this right now because I. Uh, you know, I'm not working on precision here, but basically you do a super neat job, as neat as you possibly can, and then move onwards. Okay, so a little bit of a rough clean up there, but you get the idea. Oh, just double check that you've got the reflections and any shadows that are coming through. And with that all sorted, I'm gonna duplicate this layer again and then grab a crop and just make sure my composition works nicely. It's absolutely fine at this stage to not be too worried about what's going on in the background. So use your compositional tools and make sure that everything's looking nice. I've used content aware in this instance, but honestly you could just go with empty pixels and paint them in, it's not a big deal. So now I kind of want to assess where are we at in terms of everything else. I'm gonna switch this into a smart object by right clicking and doing convert to smart object. And that will mean that I can stack filters on top so just to make this process as quickly as possible, I wanna be able to go in and out of my camera raw filter. So filter, camera raw filter, um, basically to speed up my workflow. I'm gonna switch on my black clipping over here just so I can see if we've clipped anything. And then I'm gonna start bringing down the blacks a little bit. And then I'm gonna go into my radials here and I'm gonna add a radial reasonably large. Make sure that no settings are happening at all and then bring down the blacks. I'm gonna switch that to invert, so it's working on the outside, and I'm gonna bring down the overall exposure and the shadows and the highlights of that. And what that does is it softens through the background there um, in terms of shaping the light around the horse. And then I'm gonna zoom in, holding down um, Option or Alt and uh, scrolling through with my mouse and grab the eraser tool, which is going to erase the setting effect from the horse. So I'm gonna erase with high flow, high feather, just making sure that it's not affecting the ears because they're close to the edge. And then I'm gonna click okay. And that will put that straight back out there on the background. So what that's done is that has actually put this sort of darkening effect around the edge of the image, but it's left off the ears. And what it's done as well, if you look at the lightness or brightness of the back end of the horse here, it's sort of brought it down a little bit so that it looks a little bit more realistic like we have actually shot this in a studio. So the next thing that I would probably do from here is just make sure that we can really drop that background down into black. So we're gonna obviously do a mask like we normally do. So we do select subject and with the subject selected, we do select select a mask. And from here, we just wanna make sure that we've got some good edges and using the brush, I would use the um, Alt or Option button on the keyboard and just rough deselect this area under here. Then going around the horse with the Refine Edge tool, reasonably small-ish, we're just gonna whiz round, not really being you know too careful. If you've got a black horse, you're gonna wanna do this a lot more carefully because obviously black horse, you've got dark pixels next to very dark pixels and therefore you might have an issue. So just do this carefully, do it quietly, and it was round. Okay, so with a quick whiz round done, we then wanna go back with the normal brush tool here and reclaim areas that should not have been uh, removed in that selection. Also just double check that your edge is at 0% over here because that will make a difference. And we just wanna go around and just say, actually Photoshop, I'm gonna need that section of the pony. 
and when you're reasonably happy with the selection, go ahead and make sure it's outputting to a layer mask and click OK. So with that done, we then go ahead and add a solid color layer and that solid color layer is going to be black. With that done, we then move this mask up onto this layer and then invert it. So to invert, we do Command and I. I'm just going to just double check that I'm happy with the edge. So we're going to probably have to bring it back a little bit over here, but that's fine. So we'll invert that mask. And now technically we've got a solid background. You can see that the edge here is a bit too severe. So I'm just going to go through with a uh, brush on the mask on a low opacity, probably maybe 20%. And I'm just going to go through with a black brush and just bring some of this back because the background over this area was very, very dark. I don't think uh, it's going to be too much of an issue to bring that back. Same with the ears. And we're just bringing some of that back. We need a little bit more down here. I'm going to be 30%. And then just get that detail back. Like so. I'm happy with that now. And that's pretty good. I'm going to grab a levels adjustment and I'm going to basically set this up so that I can see if the background is actually black. And you can do that by grabbing this pin to this side and bringing it all the way over. So when you get to about here, you can see what's black and what's not black. So for example, here. Now, because we've got this handy little layer set up, we can click on the mask with the black, switch it to white brush, reasonably hard-ish, not too hard. And we can just go and start to bring through some of that black. Be very careful not to go over the line of the horse. And this basically is just correcting what we've just brought back in, in terms of the detail. I want it to be a pretty good edge because I am a perfectionist, but you know, you don't need to do this until you're going to go to print, to be honest. Um, but yeah, stay to the outside of the line of the animal when you're working through this particular technique, because otherwise you will cause yourself no end of problems. Now, if this was going to, you know, go to an award, I would make sure that that was completely cleaned up. But I can do that at the end when I flatten it with a burn tool. So I'm not that concerned right now. That's fine for me. So I'm going to now delete to remove my levels layer. And we don't need that anymore. What I do want to do is lighten up these ears because they're a little bit too dark for me. So I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer. And with that curves adjustment layer done, I'm going to lift up the mid-tones and I'm just looking at the ears specifically. I'm going to bring in a little bit of contrast back in there and then copy my mask. So to copy, option or alt, click, drag, drop, and then I'm going to invert. So it's working on the whole thing and then I'm going to grab a brush, big brush, it needs to be on black at 100%. And I'm just going to take out what I don't want lifting and exposure. So it's literally just going to be working on those ears. And you could, if you wanted to, be super specific and take out some of the lower parts of those ears. So it's just the tops that get a little bit of an accentuation. And the difference there is that you can actually see them. Okay, next step would be definitely to work on the horse itself. So we would start with an iris enhance. I go to my actions, but um, this is just a curves layer, pulling the middle up to the top, inverting this mask, grabbing a brush. And with a big soft brush on 100%, we want to just do a dot over the eye. So make sure that the brush is the correct way around, harden that off, switch the palette like so, and then remove it from everywhere that is not the iris at the bottom. With that done, make it slightly bigger, slightly softer, and remove it from the top side of the eye, and then zoom right up in there, hard brush, and you want to flip your brush to put white in that section. Now, I know this is gonna to be too strong, so I'm gonna flip my brush again, nice soft brush now, and go to maybe 50% and I'm just going to knock that off the top. So with that done, the eye is brightened considerably. We can bring down that effect, but the eye has got some personality to it now. Makes a massive, 
makes a massive difference. So next step is gonna to be to contour. To contour, you guys know me, we do uh, Command Shift N for a new layer. We change the uh, mode to overlay and then we check the fill with overlay neutral color. When we've done that, we end up with a gray layer on overlay. So that means we can paint on that with black or with white and it will have a darkening or lightening effect with contrast. So we're gonna use a 20% brush on white for now. And we're gonna just go nice, soft, small brush. And we're just gonna go around the eye. Don't have to be too precise, just around the eye. So with that done, I'm then gonna switch it to black and just darken the pupil strip. Remember horse's eyes, the pupil is kind of like horizontal, not vertical or circular. So with that done, I'm then gonna zoom out, make my brush slightly larger, switch it to white, go to 10% probably, and I'm gonna start following the natural highlights of the horse's face. So anywhere where there is a natural highlight, I'm gonna add another one. Does that make sense? So anywhere that is a natural highlight, not completely white, but natural highlight gets an accentuation using this layer. Okay, next we switch the palette to black and then we do the shadows, the natural shadows. Okay, I'm happy with that. So if we group those layers together, including the one that's working on the ears, and we'll call that horse, and turn those on and off, you'll see quite a marked difference. And if we zoom out, we're now starting to look like we're a studio photo. You could add a vignette over here if you wanted to. I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast, so I'm gonna go for a levels in this situation. I'm gonna hold and close the gap to the highlights. I'll include a link to a video on levels bump above. Um, but basically we wanna close that to the point where we see highlights and then back off. And then for the blacks, we can bring those in a little bit just to take care of those extra little extraneous ones. And probably go to there and that gives us a bump of contrast. So with that done, then it's the case of just finishing it however you would like to, um, that's it. So that is the black background studio photo without having studio light. So natural light, black background work. You can use this on any animal, on any subject, just to make sure that you get the uh, principles correct from this shooting portion. And if you have any questions, please drop them into the comments box below. I'll see you all again really, really soon.